spent your time reading the Gospels, one of the things that you'll notice is that not everybody is convinced that Jesus rose from the dead. Not even all of Jesus' followers. Obviously, most famously, you have St. Thomas, you know, who we often refer to as Doubting Thomas because he wasn't there, he didn't witness it, and he's like, all right, I need to see it for myself, and then I'll believe. There's another beautiful story that happens in the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 24, about two of Jesus' disciples who, on Easter Sunday, hear the accounts that Jesus has apparently risen from the dead, and yet they make a seven-mile journey home to Emmaus. They feel like their hopes have been dashed, that they thought Jesus was going to be the one who, who saved everything, who was going to change everything, who was going to redeem Israel, and now he's dead, and yeah, some people are saying he's alive, but we don't really know what to believe about this. So they go home. They walk seven miles home. And in this story, Jesus shows up and walks with them. They don't recognize him, so he's walking along with them, and they're relaying their story to him. And he stops and explains to them everything about him from the Old Testament, which must have been quite the sermon when it comes down to it. And then he stops, and he breaks bread with them. And that's the moment that they recognize that he is really there. Now, you can see, again, some, some echoes or some foreshadowing of what it is that we do at Mass. There's a, a section where the, the scriptures are explained to us, and there's a section where we encounter Jesus in the breaking of the bread. But as we get ready to look at the very last part of the Mass, the concluding rites, it's what they do next that is so important. They go back. They go back seven miles to Jerusalem. They go back to tell the eleven what happened. They can't contain their excitement. Because in a lot of ways, this is precisely what it is that we're being asked to do at the end of Mass. Now, when it comes down to it, this last part of the Mass, the concluding rites, doesn't even seem to deserve to be called a whole section of the Mass, because there's really only two things that happen in it. There's a final blessing, and there's the dismissal. I'm going to do these in reverse. The dismissal is the part where we're told... Go forth, the Mass is ended. Or, you know, whatever version it might be that your priest or your deacon uses. We show up at Mass and we are fed intellectually. Our, our minds are fed by, by the readings, by the homily. Our hearts and our souls are fed by the Eucharist, by Jesus that we receive. And we need to bring that Jesus, we need to bring that hope out into the world. And so we're commanded to go. And our response, interestingly enough, is... Thanks be to God, not because the Mass is over and we can finally go home, but thanks be to God that we have a share in, in the same uh, work of evangelization that the disciples, that the apostles had from Jesus. We've been given the same commission. We are being sent on a mission into the world to bring the love of God to others. And this is precisely why that final blessing is so important. Because a blessing, by definition, calls and asks God's help for a person. This is why, you know, if you've ever had a Bible or a cross or a rosary blessed, it's not a prayer specifically for that object. It's a prayer for that object and the person who will use it. That it will be a reminder of God's love. That it will serve to build up our faith. Because the reality is this mission is hard and we need God's help to do it. So as we come to this last part of the Mass... As we are blessed, and as we are sent forth, we need to pray that we can have the same kind of zeal and enthusiasm that those two disciples from the road to Emmaus had. Keep in mind, they didn't show up, they didn't encounter Jesus expecting that this was what was going to happen. But our encounter with Jesus is meant to be one that transforms us. And so week after week after week, as we go back to Mass, as we go back to Mass, as we go back to Mass, the hope and the prayer is that we would be transformed like this. That we would have an enthusiasm to, to tell and to show God's love to our families, to our classmates, our co-workers, to all those around us. By our words, by our actions, and by who we are becoming. Yes, we're going to fall short. That's why we get to come back to Mass again next week and start the whole process over again. I pray that these videos will have been a help to you, that they help you make a little bit more sense about what it is that we do from Sunday to Sunday. And that 
as you as you go or as you come back or as you go for even for the first time to mass they recognize this is a place that you are wanted and you are welcome and god wants to speak his love to you and god wants to nourish you and food for the drinks that you can go out to be his witness to the world